I think that Diablo 4 has done more for the ARPG genre by doing nothing for the ARPG genre than like any other game has in the last five years. It has done so much. It's elevated people's awareness of what an ARPG is. It's gotten people interested in the genre. It's gotten people trying it out. I think it's fucking amazing. I'm super happy about it. Path of Exile had rather tremendous news, and it's news that was actually quite surprising. The idea the Grinding Gear games are going to be simultaneously running two action RPGs, Path of Exile 1 and Path of Exile 2, at the same time. I don't know how with, that's going to go. Between the two of them, one season every 1.5 months is that's tremendously nuts. ambitious, and it's partially as well an attempt for them to not run into what you could perhaps call the Overwatch 2 problem. And I don't bring this up just to bash Blizzard, it's the simple fact but that- But now that we're on the topic, they really did fuck up with Overwatch 2, didn't they? Like, they really dropped the ball there? Like, I mean, in terms of, like, L's, this was one of the biggest ones. And, like, especially, like, looking back on it and thinking about how big of an L it was, Oh, it was an L. Doing a sequel to a multiplayer game, again, the same thing happened in, say, Destiny, is really quite challenging. It's With incredible Overwatch how bad they too, fundled. The it, it was. pivots it was on impressive. what they were previously initially Very trying to do with 2 uh, over to what they ended up doing obviously right. disappointed well, fans. What yes, did it they means end that up Overwatch doing? 2 actually exists, but people were tremendously let down. Yeah. You then look at Destiny. I was there at the launch of Destiny 2. I was really having a blast. It was all quite new and exciting. It's but for those people amazing. who had played Destiny 1, seen it through its whole life, they were actually profoundly disappointed because so many of the incredible positive moves that happened over the lifespan of Destiny 1 were just not there in 2 when it came out. And so this happened- Sounds like every WoW expansion. They fix the expansion and they make a new one and it's got all the new problems. And then finally, whenever they fix all the problems, well, now it's time to make a new one again and again and again mm -hmm. even between diablo 3 and diablo 4 they're very different games d3 is far more fast paced to be honest with you the campaign and level up experience if i'm just doing it a few times i think i prefer diablo 4 but for a lot of that turbo end game grinding i'm almost feeling that i kind of prefer the speed of d3 so what do you do when you i personally think that diablo 3 sucked and i think diablo 4 is a better game all things considered, I think Diablo 4 is a better game. I think people are fucking insane if they don't think that. Diablo 3 was a terrible game. It was a joke. It had 28 seasons. Who cares? You're a company. Can you try to have it both ways? That is what Grinding Gear games have absolutely tried to do this time. Path of Exile 2 was announced in 2019. At the time, it was supposed to be an expansion of the base game that mm -hmm. would be developed alongside Path of Exile. Yeah, that's what I Their thought was going to be. plan was to have both of the campaigns playable within the same yep. game and for them to essentially have a shared end game experience. But then what happened? Well, development, things grew, new mechanics, new classes, and a bunch of other features that ended up being planned. And this is a kind of growth that would see the first game be adversely impacted because yeah. it just couldn't stay the same, right? And while you can see- So like, I I'm sure that like, they, need to, they needed to reset PoE because there's just so much stuff in the game that for a new player, it's almost impossible to get into. So I think PoE 2 is designed for a newer player. Even though it's slower and maybe more difficult, the progression and the, the way that you're going to go through the game, I think is probably more intuitive. That's a good enough plan. Just saying, hey, we're going to bolt a bunch more content onto this and we're all going to be very excited. That's a good plan. But the problem is the development happened. As they developed the game, they made new mechanics, new yep. classes, and other features. Like the role. And they essentially realized that, well, these features are no longer that compatible with Path of Exile 1. Uh, PoE 1 would be destroyed by these structural changes, and that is exactly... Yeah, like imagine if you could just like roll things. Rock, paper, shotgun, what the creative director of Path of Exile mm -hmm. said. Effectively, it would be destroying PoE 1 if we did our original plan, and we didn't want to do that. Yeah. 
And that's interesting to me. I've seen quite a few people talk about how Path of Exile 2 was, at ExileCon, perhaps a little bit overtuned, but that it did seem to be less of a speed, speed, speed kind of experience, which again reminded well, me of Diablo 4 versus 3. D3, very zoomy, very speedy. D4, definitely a bit more slowed down and uh, and methodical. I don't so, know. I, mean, I played I played a uh, fucking barbarian in Diablo 4. I feel like Diablo 4 is about as fast as Diablo 3, uh, give or take some things. Uh, overall, though, I, I completely agree that there's no way they could have had PoE 1 and do the reset. No way. Diablo 3 was an insane speed difference. No idea about Diablo 3. That much is clear, man? Oh, I, I do. I was Paragon 100 in the game. Like, uh, in, in the original game? Yeah. Like, 100%. Like, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know what they did in, like, season, you know, 17 or something like that. Yeah, the 100 is nothing? No, it was the cap back then. Uh, that, that was the cap. You couldn't get higher than 100. That's the way the game worked. And so, uh, yeah, they probably increased the speed by time. But I remember on release, Diablo 3 was like, I, I would say it was way slower than Diablo 4 on release. You wish to compare D3 to first seasons, not season 15? Yeah, I mean, of course the game is going to have more th more stuff over time. Original Zoomers trying to pull a fast one in chat? Yeah, there's always people that think that they know what they're talking about. It's sad. Anyway, um, I, I think that really this is a big problem for PoE. And that's the reason why like, I, I talk about the game and the one thing that everybody says constantly, I don't I don't want to play the game. It's too complicated. There's too much in it. I, I don't know enough about the systems. It's overwhelming. And I think that there is a an element of that that's good, but to the degree that POE has it, it becomes bad. Or Blizzard and many other companies end up, yes, making that sacrifice mm -hmm. and just moving on to the new thing. Grinding Gear are quite evidently trying to have their cake and eat it too, which is always a silly turn of phrase yeah. because, hey, if you've got cake, why not eat it? I can come up with several compelling reasons, but let's move on with the story. The good thing about this then, mm -hmm. with Path of Exile 2 now being a full standalone game, is that it still does have a lot of its shared game experience DNA. As an example, every single thing that players have purchased or will purchase in the future will be usable in both games, unless this is the sort yeah. of thing that is like so specific that it, you know, just like wouldn't tie at all into the content of um, you know of one of the other games now they did suggest that the narrative content of path of exile one will be ending the campaign of two is a direct continuation of that however leagues will still be designed they will be made for the original game and i believe they will be well i think they're probably going to keep making leagues at the same rate as well of course that's what's going to happen it means the classes they've never said something specific content yeah they're trying to just keep people engaged with the game for a longer period of time i will be curious to see if people like poe2 as much as like as poe1 because i think that there'll be a lot of people that will like poe1 more because you can just go faster i'm gonna try poe because it was complicated made it to 70 on my own but it was so confusing what to do after you beat the campaign well that's that's like that's what the problem is the game is I think PoE, I think they do things that they don't have to do. Like, for example, locking players into a build before they finish campaign. I don't think that you improve the game by doing that. You don't, like, there's nothing that is gained by making a new player not be able to respec easily whenever they want, trying out new things whenever they first start playing the game. It just doesn't, it doesn't improve the game. It doesn't help anything. It's so easy to solve. I don't know why they didn't do it. So it's way too expensive. Yeah, and, and there's a few other things too. But I think the biggest problem with PoE is that there are so many systems. You think about, you know, Expedition, Delve. Like, I mean, I don't know. We could list out like a 50 of them, right? And all of them you have to be aware of and at least have some working knowledge of to be uh, proficient in the game. It's too much. Their three month cadence, which means that between both of those games, you now have a season every 1.5 months, or at least that seems to be the plan. That is pretty damn crazy, especially mm -hmm. when you think that actually PoE 1 seasons are pretty chunky. I mean, I, I yeah. took a look at Crucible lately. And it's actually quite impressive. Certainly to me, it was impressive compared to Season of the Malignant in Diablo 4. Well, so let's actually Crucible, like, uh, 
it's interesting because a lot of people, like at least from what I heard whenever Crucible came out, a lot of people were not happy with Crucible. And like it was a very good league for people that were like a very high end players, especially because it gave them like more builds to like min max and stuff like that. But I saw a lot of like a lot of PoE streams that I would watch. People skipped the Crucible mechanic entirely, and they only started doing it at the very end whenever they're doing Delirious maps. Crucible was just bad because of the mob difficulty. Yeah, it was really hard. Can you explain what a season and Diablo games means? Seasons and Diablo and PoE, it's the same thing. It's like a complete reset of the game where everybody levels from one and they can build the new character. Season before Crucible, which was Sanctum, which is the best. Yeah, people like that a lot. Men Max League, ninety five percent skipping. Yeah, exactly. Take a look then at the features of Path of Exile 2. Mm -hmm. And speaking of features, our game, yes, we're also a game development studio, uh, The Pale Beyond was actually featured by Steam on a daily deal. And because of that, it's currently 25% off. I still We've need to play this. been above 90% on Steam I've for been such ages. A lazy People really bitch. seem to be happy. And we just dropped a free content update that adds a whole bunch of epilogues, which essentially means the fates of all the core characters yeah, that you to care about will, uh, you know, will be there, will be elaborated on, and in a way that is very real active to the choices you make and the endings that you get in the game so you can check out the steam link and with that said path of exile 2 features so footage was shown from act three of the game and that's mm -hmm. uh, three out of a total of six acts now the gameplay had two classes monk which is dex and int based more of a kind and of like resource management too, right? in the form of power charges which are generated and then used in uh, different abilities gotta say i really do think that some of the animations and stuff for the bunk are i mean they're just really impressive to me i kind of love those like almost like airbender swoops so monk looking good to me we then have sork which of course is int focused uh, more about uh, like destructive abilities versus the witch that was previously in the game now they also then showed off ascendancy classes for everyone with class specific paths uh, three for each which will basically allow for a whole bunch of personalization by the time that uh, you know you're actually hitting the end game we then got fairly interesting changes to core combat mechanics and for the casters they're all getting free base spells in each weapon rather than a melee attack that of course takes up an attack mod space um, yeah it, it people nobody uses the melee attack anyway it doesn't matter i think having a special ability attached to the weapon is really interesting i like that a lot i i think also like the six classes the ascendancies etc I do wish that PoE didn't have a gender lock. And, like, I don't want to play... I, I want to play a male necromancer. I, I don't want to have to play a witch and then make her a necromancer. But, you know, it is what it is. Helpers also want to open up the game to allow for different... It's fine. Well, I'm not going to quit the game over it. I'm just saying I wish it didn't have it. and passive buffs being able to be matched to skills. As an example, Who cares? whenever oh, I you do. use an ice spell, your character will automatically switch to the better weapon mm -hmm. set. And for melee combat... I think this is one of the big things. Melee combat, it's punchy, it's fun, but whenever yeah. your pathfinding and stuff is a bit wonky, you, you do have issues. So they say they're actually moving their melee combat model towards mobility and control as a focus. And this is going to include better pathfinding for skills to ensure that people basically aren't really frustrated by complex environments or bad pathing, wasting their abilities. This is one problem a lot of times that melee builds have in, in the game like Diablo. Diablo 3 had this issue too, is that caster builds a lot of time default down to... I can take maybe one or two hits, but I can kite everything and kill it before it can hit me. And that always scales better than like melee builds early on that can't do that. So it's like you have all of these like attacks that whenever you're a caster, you don't even have to think about or care about these attacks. At the end of the day, the last thing anyone wants is for their character to control like the horse from Diablo 4. Nobody wants that. As a man. It's a pretty bad horse as far as video game horses go. Yeah. Now, they're also working on crowd control. Here's a really good quote. In Path of Exile 2, all crowd control mechanics now have internal meters mm -hmm. that allow you to build up to a freeze or stun or whatever other CC mechanic you're using. It's a little bit like poise from games like Elden Ring, yep. though the meters tend to be a lot smaller. Every character now has a dodge yeah, roll. Yeah, and also, by the way, this is the exact same as Diablo 4 and Lost Ark. Like, Elden Ring is one example, but all, all of these games have this, and I just think that it's, it's like one of those things where as soon as one game has it, then everybody else takes it because it's just better. It also lets you cancel out of almost any skill 
at any time, which to me does sound quite good and fun. Yeah. To move on, in terms of rewards, bosses have got the ability to provide a permanent stat bonus upon defeat, and there's over a hundred of them, um, which each area of the campaign having a boss and some unique mechanics. And even just looking at their trailers, those bosses actually did look really cool. Uh, now, those areas are also going to have nice quality of life features where a player can summon NPCs to their location in order to allow the player to manage quests without having to return back to town. Which uh, is very fucking nice. Extremely nice. I do worry a little bit. Like, I don't want to have to kill 100 different monsters every league, especially if I'm alternating between Diablo 4, PoE 1, and PoE 2. But we'll have to see what this is really like. Yeah, it's altar of yeah altar of Lilith bosses exactly yeah, so I, I I'll wait to see what it is, oh, which is uh, again sounds really nice to me again with Diablo Four I enjoyed the big open world and all of that mm -hmm. when I was doing my level up content I've actually found that I'm enjoying it less and less as time goes on and that it more is starting to feel like a slow and inefficient menu to access content which of course is I mean one of the inherent uh, issues. That you tend to run into when you are going for um, like you know a big fixed like open world game now there's also changes to stats and casting in the addition of mm -hmm. spirit as a resource where spirit is basically designed to allow people to activate passive abilities and skills without burning mana to implement them by the it way i think that the spirit thing i talked about this before this is such a great idea like, everybody plays the game pretty much the exact same. Everybody burns their entire mana bar on reservation. It's garbage. Like, it's just... Like, it's the same as flasks, right? Like, whenever everybody plays the exact same way, it's time to change the way that things are designed. There's an example they gave here called Arctic Armor as an ongoing buff for the Sorcerer class. This essentially will build over time, but it doesn't impact any other casting. And the idea here is that players will be able to experiment with ongoing buffs and they shouldn't be punished for having to want, uh, you know, having to want both, essentially. So this is kind of freeing up mm -hmm. builds to use like Heralds or as minions. It just seems, it seems neat to me. I keep on finding when I'm like building a character that... Uh, there's things I'd like to experiment with that sound fun, but to me, I constantly feel like the skill tree is like maybe nudging me towards, uh, I mean, nudging me towards like glass cannon. Obviously that was a bit weird in D4 because of how the resistances worked and how like it was pretty OP when you could just stack a bunch of armor stuff. Anyway, I digress. It does seem like a fairly interesting mechanical yeah. uh, twist and things. Everyone is going to start with 100 spirit, um, but of course, different effects use different amounts of spirit. So essentially, you can kind of like use a, a loadout of um, of those like different buffs and things. So it seems pretty cool. And yeah, I think loadouts, like I kind of don't like loadouts because it seems like it's what is every game Call of Duty now, but like they're just more convenient ways to be able to play the game the way you want. Like, that's really all there is to it. So, if you look at it from that perspective, seems pretty good. Wise, uh, scepters are your, uh, then your offhand slot. Those are the things that will be, like, the quickest way mm -hmm. to get more spirit. They're also changing how gems work in the game. Uh, skill gems now drop as uncut gems that will allow the player to select a skill that matches the level of the area they received the gem in, and this should allow for more player control. This is in particular with meta gems, which can have uh, skills socket into them to mm -hmm. allow for very ridiculous combos. So you can put gems in your gems, which seems cool. Uh, so Diablo, I guess they must have stolen that from Diablo Immortal. Because remember, you could do that with Diablo Immortal. Basically, overall then, I think the, the thing with Remember Path that? of Exile 2, and I guess this is one of the ways where it really good days. is justifying itself as a different experience, mm -hmm. it is that they're making things meaningfully different in terms of how the game actually works. It doesn't seem like just a bunch of classes added to Path of Exile 1. No, it is a different passive mechanics that will result in a game that I suppose does feel different to play. Now, as for when we'll be able to try this, there's going to be a beta in June of 2024. So still pretty much Very a calendar long time year away, away from months. now. Uh, one thing that they are noting here is their plans for the beta are very, very comprehensive. So here's, here's a big quote. It'll be the whole game, and we're going to run it for as long as we would run a league at least. So months. Oh, fuck. I didn't even know that. Thank God. 
Thank fucking God. Because every game, this is the this is the problem that New World had. It's the problem that Diablo had. Is that like the level 25 beta was awesome because everything was fine on those levels. The Diablo 3 beta was only Act 1, and Act 1 was awesome. And then uh let's see. New World. New World had a beta. It didn't last long enough. People didn't hit max level. And then nobody actually figured out what the problems with the game were. So they weren't able to change it. So that we know for sure what the economy looks like, what everything looks like once it yeah, really exactly. shakes out. So essentially, they're Thank really dude, focused that's, on the actual core holy game. Holy fuck, that makes me feel so much better. Wow, that is actually... Holy fuck. God, I didn't see that part of the interview. Oh, wow. Betas are marketing now? Well, this looks like it's an actual beta for the game. It's like a whole league test? Yeah, exactly. Smart test? Yeah, that's and very to me, smart. this is an interesting point of contrast. Because you're looking at it from like a long-term perspective. D4 wasn't perspective. really giving people that extremely full testing period, no, right? It was it, more targeted slices. It, and to... also, even the end game beta for Diablo 4 apparently was only a week or something grass test servers and that kind of thing grinding gear have basically just said yeah we know we can handle the servers the thing that we want to get right is like balance and the economy yeah and of course you look at d4 and the likes of balance player usability and end game those have been the major points of feedback right it's like d4 is i think at its best when you're kind of like leveling up you know in your first character diablo it 4 is a game that the better the, the less seriously you take it the better it is so if you're not really paying attention or giving a fuck things are going really well it's when you hit the end game subsequent characters and that kind of mm -hmm. thing that i think d4 maybe slows down a bit and i think weakens as an experience so it is yeah. quite interesting to me what the focus of their testing is i suppose in this yeah, case, casually this it's is a great game, game that is made by developers who have been really shipping lots of live product for years and mm -hmm. years and years and years and yes that had been happening with d3 but d3 seasons you know they, they weren't as big right it wasn't a big like free to play you know decently monetized game blizzard i think had less of an incentive there um so you do just get i think a lot of uh, you just get a lot of the good vibes here and I think a lot that does, at least to me, feel like it is targeted at alleviating the sorts of problems that, say, D4 has had in terms of design quibbles uh, from the period of its, like, you know, its launch into... I mean, realistically, for Diablo... I love how this is the only time you ever see this ability. Is in this one video. Nobody uses this. Nobody even knows what it is. I remember whenever the game came out, people were like, oh, well, let's try it out. It's the one from the trailer. And everybody's like, no, it's bad. Don't use it. For I think it will be the end of season two that we really start to see things coming it's along. Sad, it would be really I mean, cool. Personally, for me, I'm going to want to see more interesting uh, endgame things going on in uh you know in in d4 and certainly when i look at a bunch of the leagues in path of exile it does seem that that is a more fleshed out end game experience now if blizzard are not going to be adding anything like that until the next expansion then to me it's almost like uh with d3 all over again where yeah you know d3 as an end game experience to me was only oh, God, really that. fun in reaper of souls when they added so much of that love to the loot system and i uh, i think the exact opposite i think it was only good on the base game i think reaper of souls sucked i i have a very unpopular opinion everybody thinks that i'm wrong i'm not wrong but everybody thinks that i'm wrong and like the end game experience i feel like d4 yeah. is missing out in the end game experience right now vanilla d3 was yeah, way better quite funny and i suppose on that like yeah to talk about competition in this space there's quite a few i actually hear grim dawn's got some new stuff going on i think we all remember was it wilson it's not like last year arpgs oh, yeah quite... i remember that i watched a video about wilson recently it was a video it was called wilson in 2013 still won't recommend it or something like that a few of them just blow up for a few weeks then you don't hear as much about them obviously d4 is the big thing and they have actually made some comment just saying that they empathize with the team especially regarding expectations mm -hmm. around a first season and patches 
Um, they said, I mean, ultimately, the learning process for running a live game with seasons like this is a hard one. We've learned our lessons about how to do this stuff. I feel very bad for the developers yep. because I'm sure they mean well, but yeah, it's a hard lesson to learn. I think the entire internet has been aware of that, yeah. even with, I mean, the PC Gamer tweet that was like, you know, how it started, how oh, it is Oh, this is fucked up. God damn. Oh, shit. This is... That is... Is, is this too much? Like, I feel like they're getting bullied at this point. God damn. Oh, and it was savage. just a perfectly timed screenshot of one of the D4 developer streams Jesus. where just no one was looking at the camera and everyone looked really depressed. It was a state where it's God. like, oh man, your heart goes out, uh, you know, to yeah. those developers. Management, and I mean, some of them are management, but you know, they're being rolled out almost every week to do a live stream to firefight some problem. Oh dear, the poor bastards like, Really though, I think well, that's what happened to Lost Ark too. As I said, I think that they could have dispelled the entire problem. All they would have needed to do is do the apology live stream, the emergency live stream, rent out a white room, and do exactly what the three bozos of Lost Ark did. <laughs> and just do the same fucking thing. Cause it would have been so fucking stupid and funny that it would have completely disarmed any criticism. Because it's like, people, you know, fundamentally it's entertainment, right? So if it's funny, it just, just like this is something I learned in like uh, middle school and high school, is that if the teacher calls on you and you don't know the answer, tell a joke and everybody will forget. A lot of it works every time. These games becomes apparent when we actually just listen to what Jonathan Rogers says because he was quite keen to downplay the way in which Diablo 4 can be compared to Path of Exile, mm -hmm. right? Um, you know, he was quite keen to talk about PoE, how it's taking a different path um, that doesn't mean that they'll be particularly similar experiences. Um, and he kind of talked about D4 and the MMO path, right? Which, you know, massively multiplayer online. And in many ways, that's what Diablo 4 is. And I think the bit where- I'm gonna have an unpopular take, is that I hope that PoE has a shared world area that players can go to. I do, I think that I hope they have it. Uh, I think it'd be really cool that you could go to that area and see people and inspect them and see what their gear is, look at the other microtransactions. Like you had that with Orioth for a while, right? Remember? And then, like, that that's not really a thing anymore, right? So I think it'd be really cool. I'd like it. To a town. Yeah, a town. I'd just like to have a town. Right? A, a really nice-looking town that's not just like a, uh, you know, like basically a quest hub. But, yeah, I think it'd be really cool. And also, I think it'd be good for them because it would allow them to advertise, allow players to advertise microtransactions to each other. Seems like a great fucking idea. The only problem is that if they did that, you see, they'd have to load the stash tab. Well, they wouldn't have to. They have to load the read only stash tabs from those accounts, standard league characters that have to have their name changed because it was been like six years. And so it creates an error in the database and nobody can play the game. The player I found D4 to be a little confusing is that it is this odd hybrid, right? because in one yeah. way it's feeling kind of mmo like it's like hey there's a hell tide over there all the players are going to come and do isometric games don't make for good mmos do the hell tide and you'll do it in a big world and that can be quite fun you know you go to do an event a bunch of other people you run into them you all do the event together but then to me that starts to create more of a lost arc like expectation yeah. where i can have a character Which is great lost arc is a great game in many ways I can get that character to end game. And then I personally would almost expect, and again, I'm not saying it should be like this, but some of That's the good. design no. decisions of Diablo 4 not would make me. me personally expect that once I get my character to level 100, that I've kind of hit the end game of the MMO. And yeah, that you from season to season, I'll get new content, new modifiers, you know, new things, mm -hmm. and that each season will sort of successively have better gear for my character in some way. Uh, yet with Diablo 4, it feels like a lot of the design is making me expect that. 
but then the end game feels undercooked and then the season is at well undercooked would imply that it was cooked yeah this is a problem let's just say that it's not cooked to the way that people want it okay it, it's not cooked <laughs> raw so yeah I, I i think so it was left out in the sun yeah 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 it, i don't know i mean like i like the mmo features of diablo 4 i think the world bosses are cool i i really do i think they're cool i think the open world is cool i don't think it's a big deal i don't i i it's pretty much completely optional it's nice it's cool to go out there but it's just not a big deal to me I just don't think that you can have an MMO, like the level of immersion that you can get from being able to move your camera around, zoom in, change your perspective in the world. I just think that having a locked camera angle just pigeonholes you so much. Like, I just, I don't feel like that same type of like escapism and immersion whenever I'm playing an isometric game, personally asking you to start over again i'm never and in I the game done that. i've started a drill you know that's the best way to say it. i'm never in the game more wolves and i think now i end up i have like seven or eight skill points out of five in the in the wolf thing so i just noticed the animation to spawn these guys is so fucking boring that even inside of the cinematic for showing the fucking trailer they had to cut it now I, Watch. Up, I have like seven See? or eight skill points out of five in the in the wolf thing so i'm going around fire wow. fighting everywhere with my wolves and that is pretty good and fun but also it's i mean it's basically <laughs> just leveling up again and those of us yeah. who have played mmos know that like yeah you can level up characters for forever but the thing that's probably going to make the game the most sticky is whenever you can maybe head back to your main and do a whole bunch of stuff at the end game yeah. and d4 just doesn't really seem set up for that i mean it's not because it's taking these more mmo like things but it's still sticking with the very seasonal action rpg thing and i wonder then like with path of exile are they just more embracing what they actually are and focusing on delivering the best version of that whereas going through the interview with yeah i think poe knows they're an arpg and they're going to do arpg things paper shotgun i think uh i think yeah. what rogers is really you know, going towards is like different inspirations having a sort of different overall uh targeted like game feel that they're trying to go for mm -hmm. than d4 which means they're not particularly concerned about d4 again i remember was it torchlight and uh d3 coming out the torchlight devs were just like ah you know rising tide lifts all ships yeah if d4 gets a whole bunch of people i i think that i think diablo 4 has been great for the arpg industry I think it's been tremendous and fucking incredible because it gets it gets the mainstream audience thinking about ARPGs and Blizzard has done more for PoE and for Torchlight and for Last Epoch than I think they probably could have ever done for themselves just because of the fact that they made such a massive fucking game in a genre that up until now has been kind of niche for the better part of 10 years. It's a gateway drug, yes. And it's great. Like, I, I can appreciate Diablo 4 just for that. Back into an ARPG, and they're hungry for more content, and D4 isn't scratching the itch. And then they hear good buzz about Path of Exile. That's obviously amazing for Path of Exile. I suppose I find myself currently, based on what I've seen of PoE 2, and what I've now seen of PoE 1, it does seem like... I hope that with the pinnacle bosses in PoE 2, do you want to know what I hope they use as a benchmark? Uber Elder and Vaulton Gate 2. Solo Vaulton Gate 2. That should be what you do. That is the absolute fucking pinnacle. Oh, oh, also Searing Exarch, which is, in my opinion, equivalent to Uber Elder in terms of like quality of mechanics, etc. Even though I think probably Uber Elder is maybe a little bit more well designed. Uh, but yes, like there are so many insanely good fights in Lost Ark. And it's like the game, it's like, yeah, it's pay to win fucking garbage. But god damn, those fights are fucking amazing. At least some of them are. PoE 1, surprisingly, as an ongoing game experience, yeah. maybe Do is actually more interesting to me.
with d4 i really like the start i really like the end i think it got kind of boring in the middle personally i was expecting the level of storytelling mm -hmm. that was present in the introduction of diablo 4 i was actually expecting that to be the campaign of the game but instead i felt like the campaign was often quite watered down and open worldy in a way that like honestly even a bit of diablo immortal was which to me wasn't great but then the ending was quite strong however looking yeah at i think the ending of diablo i remember i stayed up late to finish the campaign of diablo 4 it was pretty good i i, I think in the middle yeah there was a bit of meandering but overall i think the campaign is better than a poe campaign poe it does seem like it would be a more rewarding experience so ultimately then I am left absolutely wanting to jump into Path of Exile. Uh, I made a tweet about Thank that. God. Uh, is there anything I should know? Um, <laughs> is there anything I should know? Oh, God. Is there anything I should know? Uh, <laughs> well. <laughs> well, well, well. Mike, of course, one of my colleagues over in the Warcraft scene, he's obviously less of a Warcraft guy now. Um, he just tweeted at me, like, do it blind. Do not research. So I'm like, sure. All right, Mike. I, I really hope Belly Ewer doesn't do that. Please tell Belly Ewer not to go in blind. Like, I'm okay if he wants to go in blind just to get the experience and see kind of the weaknesses of PoE, because I think going in blind is just simply a bad experience. Straight up, it's just a, it's a bad experience. The game is not designed that way. And I think that he'll have way more fun if he follows a build guide that he thinks that he'll enjoy and deviates into places that he thinks are interesting. That's personally what I think you should do as a new player. But semi-blind is way better. Yeah, like have a, have a skill tree that you're going to go with. Have a build guide. Work towards that generally. You don't have to copy every single piece of gear, but just have a North Star. That Yes, you just, just have a North Star. You don't have to take every single little step the exact same, but have an idea of where you're going to go and have it be informed by somebody who is like, I mean, oh, there's so many good PoE content creators. You should be fine. I'll do it. I'll jump in. I'll jump into PoE. It... It, it it seems like it might actually I cannot happen. fucking wait to see this by the way holy shit I cannot fucking wait to see this by the way Kurt I didn't even know you could do that I have Kurt's on more to offer in terms of like build craft and I didn't know it came from uh, than D4 and I'm just finding that like yeah man D D4 is just a very slow I experience it's like the leveling is slow it's like I feel like I want to race my new character up and start getting into the meat of things but Doesn't I don't feel like oh, it has okay, that right. meat at the end game other than just doing the nightmare dungeons at a high tier with a bunch of at fixes, which is like fun <laughs> for a bit. Yeah, but I kind of want more. So I'm almost left. I'm yeah. left this video thinking Path of Exile looks like the game to play now, now that it I've is. enjoyed D4 once. If a Diablo 4 season ends up uh, really like surpassing expectations and, and actually it. having quite a bit of content, yeah. I'll definitely do that. But other than that, for D4, I suspect I might be waiting until the next expansion and what that does in a sort of big sense for endgame systems, th that might just be where I have to go. Bro, some of these trees, by the way, I saw this one dude that hit 107% cooldown reduction. Like, usually for, like, uh, cast when damage taken builds, like, you want to hit, it was, like, 23 or 26%. And like I hit 50 something percent, which was the second break point. This dude was like, no, the 90% isn't even good enough for me. I'm going to go over a hundred percent and I'm watching his fucking screen. And it's like, I, I'm not epileptic, but I think if I played that fucking class, I would be. Holy shit. Bro, Crucible League was insane for custom builds. I, I think that Crucible League was like synthesis or harvest. It was fucking nuts. Okay, let Show? me know uh, what you think. Probably what should. I certainly think is interesting thus far is the humongous expansion of Show the, the video? maybe not expansion, okay, I'll, but I'll real quick, okay? Uh, Poe three point twenty one. Is it twenty twenty one? Twenty one. Uh, okay, I found the ninety percent. Okay, I apologize. I can't find the other one that was even farther beyond that. Uh, but yeah.
Music to my ears. Isn't this great? This build's amazing, by the way. It's a great build. I wouldn't recommend anybody to play it. Yeah. But the action RPG genre is something that people See, are you see why they want to make PoE 2 now? You see why? That's why they want to make PoE 2. Check out Ward with Sword Loop. Oh, I already watched it. I watched it when it came out talking about so much I saw him now. trying to I do mean, it fundamentally at the that beginning idea of, the week. of build craft fragging a stupid amount of mobs to be honest I even see a little Trying reflection of that Obama. in yeah. say some of the build craft and mass slaughter of uh, vampire survivors which you I do. think is all to say that build build craft based kill lots mm -hmm. of dude games are 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 in yeah. I then wonder how much Well, it, it is, because like I actually really like the way he said that, because isn't that effectively what Halls of Torment and Vampire Survivors is? By the way, didn't Halls of Torment just recently come out with an update? I saw an update video from Dex. There's apparently a new class or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've got to play that in a couple of days. Can we trim? And how much can we focus on the bits of the game that Beta really version? excel that? I'll try it out. Because with D4, I feel like there's a lot of open world pseudo MMO fat, but the game's yeah. not actually delivering a full pseudo MMO experience. I think it's fucking pathetic. It's pathetic that you have a, a, a pseudo MMO game, an MMO light that doesn't have a group finder. What? What do you mean you don't have a group finder? Which means that fat is more just of a, of, of a downside. Does Diablo 2 have a group survivors finder? And the whole survivor genre. Oh, there it is, And yeah. it's like a really fine distillation Has of Bellier that. Has you know, played your, uh, Halls like, of Torment? You, know, you, you have characters, you have you know your, your, your items that you can build with, um, but like in terms of control and stuff like that, it is so much have, more of, uh, you know, of a distilled... Right. Uh, I want to go back and play Vampire and Survivors I think at again. At the other end of that, you have Path of Exile. So to me, it's as if Vampire Survivors is a very approachable minimalist. Uh... Well, no. Like, I, I just want you guys to understand this. This character, I made this character, and I named him Vampire Survivor. I did. Because, by the way, you see, like, you, you might think that he's pressing his buttons really fast down there, but he's actually not. They're all auto-casting. He's actually doing nothing. He's not pressing... He has to press one button to, like, resummon them when he goes into another area. But other than that, he does nothing. Literally nothing. Occasionally, he will hit this button if a big mob shows up. Beautiful game. Absolutely recommend it. That's not fun, to be honest. It is. Because you, I spent 74 hours earning the ability to do nothing. So it's not like you start out and you're doing nothing. No. I made this a reality. I'm almost That's uh, the approach difference. to the get strong, kill many boys genre. Yeah. Whereas Diablo 4 is, I guess, just bogged down by trying to be a pseudo MMO. Why do they do that if they weren't intending to like actually embrace that? I don't know. TLDR, Stupid I'm left dog. confused. If you'd like to buy our game, which um, is very much not like an action oh, RPG, and you can check out the pill beyond. It's currently 25% off Steam. If you want to support our team at store.baluler.games, you've got the likes of our delicious, lovely art book, which is very awesome. And with that, let me know what your experience has been, especially if you have been i mean i've been i've been in the mmo mine i know that many of you guys have been in the rpg mine so i will share i like the word mine because that's really yeah like a coal mine pops i think i'm getting the black lung with you my mmo uh, experience and tales please share with me your arpg tales i want to learn have a wonderful day I'll see you next time. Yep, there we go. It's a good video. It's a very good video. I'm hoping Bellyor plays PoE. I will be really curious to hear what his opinions of PoE are. Because, like, he's going into the game 
with literally like over 10 years of like I, I, I skipped expedition and I come back and I'm like, what the fuck is this? Imagine what the fuck <laughs> you would have no idea about anything. Oh my God.